Hello, I'm Robert Sims, a PhD student at Lancaster University in the United Kingdom. This is our study presentation for Veritas, Mind Mapping in Virtual Reality. Low-cost devices are typically used for content consumption such as 360-degree videos or visualising the solar system. These activities are typically passive in nature, do not utilise the full benefits of virtual reality space and only target lower cognitive processes such as those illustrated in Bloom's taxonomy of remembering and understanding. Most VR learning applications also tend to be domain specific such as learning medical procedures or how to program robots. Tools that can be used in a domain agnostic manner can leverage techniques such as inquiry based learning, have wider applicability and can be used as a scaffolding strategy by teachers. My mapping is a domain agnostic tool that has been shown to aid learning. Pen and paper and desktop implementations of mind mapping are common, but VR implementations less so. VR introduces interesting spatial organisation opportunities for mind mapping activities. However, implementing mind mapping in VR is not trivial, especially on low cost VR devices. Care has to be given to design interactions so users can concentrate on the process of reflection and abstract thinking arising from mind mapping rather than how to operate within the VR environment itself. To this end, we designed a mind mapping application in virtual reality called Veritas, targeting the Oculus Go low-cost VR headset and conducted a study to assess its usability. The motivation for Veritas is a classroom-based setting where reflective tasks like mind mapping are to be carried out. The Oculus Go is a three degrees of freedom system with one controller that includes triggers and a thumb swipe surface. We used the Unity game engine development platform to develop the system. The mind mapping environment consists of a wallless 10x10 Unity unit bounded box. The interaction objects are represented by double sided tiles with each side showing a picture or text corresponding to a piece of information. Twelve tiles are initially presented to the user by a double stacked rotating carousel. We assess the number of established interaction methods and metaphors to determine which would be suitable for inclusion within Veritas. Raycasting was implemented for object highlighting and selection. Planar translation of objects was via a drag metaphor. Depth movement was via the user sliding their thumb up or down on the touchpad. Tiles were changed in size by the user sliding their thumb left or right on the touchpad. Rotation of tiles was via a hysteresis based approach using the angular rotation of the controller. This is analogous to the steering wheel of a car. Links between tiles can be created indicating relationships. This is indicated by a pulsing blue line and is directional. Entry into and out of each state of interaction was controlled by a state model. For the study, 24 participants were invited to take part from the Lancaster University student body. They consisted of 20 males, 4 females, all in the age range of 18 to 50. Four participants had no prior VR experience. One had only used VR before. No participant stated they were regular users of VR. After a brief introduction to the headset for fit and comfort, participants were asked to complete three tasks. A pre-activity task, a main activity task, and a post-activity task. The pre-task consisted of mini-tasks to be completed accompanied by helper instructions. The post-task consisted of the same mini-tasks but were absent the help instructions. These two tasks and the difference in completion time and error rates between the two were designed to measure the learnability of the interactions. The main task was preceded by the participant being provided with a topic information sheet, Animal Kingdom, Web Technologies or War of the Roses. For the main task, the participants were asked to construct a mind map representing the information from the topic information sheet. Participant actions within the VR system were recorded by in-system video and via logging. Logging recorded successful interactions, interaction errors, tile positions and relationships, and activity times. After all tasks were completed, participants completed a user experience questionnaire UEQ, and a simulator sickness questionnaire. SSQ, and were given the opportunity to reflect verbally on their experience. 
there was a statistically significant difference in task completion times between the pre- and post-activity tasks, with the post-activity being completed significantly faster than the pre-activity. For the UEQ, participants scored Veritas high in terms of attractiveness, stimulation and novelty. The scores for perspicuity, efficiency and dependability were also positive but lower. Responses to the SSQ showed no notable increase in discomfort or form of nausea. Users reflecting on the experience of the application felt that the HUD was a little too low, seven participants, and that they would like to be able to multi-select objects, three participants. We found an expected reduction in task completion times for the post-task. Apart from learning effect, the positive observation of low error rates indicates that the participants were able to work with the interaction metaphors without extra effort. All users completed the main activity to a reasonable standard of completeness and quality, indicating that all the essential interactions were in place and usable. The main activity and completeness of the resulting mind maps demonstrated that the participants were able to understand and use the state model for interaction workflow with relative ease. The strong results for attractiveness and novelty metrics would normally be expected for a well-designed VR application. The stimulation metric indicates higher motivation to continue using the product. This observation is particularly important as situational interest is essential to inquiry-based learning and strengthens the argument for performing mind map exercises in VR. The motivation for Veritas was to identify a suitable interaction workflow to support creation of mind maps in VR. We also wish to see how users would make use of the 3D space available to them for organising the information. The video analysis and the tile position visualisations showed a very good use of 3D space with each participant producing a clearly identifiable mind map in one of three recognised styles. Participants made ample use of the spatial positions, logging interactions to move the tiles back and forth along the z-axis, a depth interaction. The use of the z-axis suggests that mind mapping in VR may offer advantages over traditional 2D implementations. The interaction workflow of Veritas is designed for use with low-cost 3DOF controllers. While we ran the studies on the Oculus Go headset, Veritas could easily be ported to a low-fidelity smartphone setup, e.g. cardboard, making it even more accessible or ported to the Oculus Quest for increased interaction possibilities afforded by a 6DOF headset and controllers. While the current scope of Veritas is a single-user mind map activity, the leap to a collaborative mind mapping application is obvious. Collaborative mind mapping in VR has the opportunity to support richer interactions and collaborations since the independent headsets can support one world multiple perspectives for the task. However, designing for collaboration necessitates thinking about how conflict is managed when interacting with the same set of information. Personal and shared workspaces were a possible approach to solving this problem. With the usability of Veritas established, exploration of user behaviours within the application while building the mind map is required to develop the application further to support collaborative learning. There is also the obvious question, does learning indeed occur within a VR mind mapping application? And how would one measure such learning? Veritas provides a baseline for these questions to be explored further. This study demonstrated that low-cost devices are capable of supporting complex reflective task activities, specifically in the form of mind mapping. While interactions can be complex, supporting them through means such as audio feedback and UI to communicate system state to the user can create an environment where a user can learn how the system functions and their performance improves within the system over time. Furthermore, there does appear to be an advantage in conducting mind mapping activities within VR as several participants utilise the full 3D spatial area that VR affords to manipulate their mind map in ways not traditionally available in traditional 2D applications.